Gagan is a wild ass ride and it's a story you're not gonna wanna miss. So Gagan is penned by Hiroya Oku of Gant's fame and I'll give you a quick rundown. See, Gagant tells the story of Rei Yoko Yamada, a Japanese high school student who's pretty average by most standards. He enjoys what most kids enjoy doing. He enjoys video games, talking to his friends, and watching the movies of his favorite adult film actress, Papiko. Now, one day, Rei Yoko Yamada's heading home, and he notices these posters, right, of Papiko being basically doxxed by people on the internet, showcasing her address and all this other sort of stuff. And he's like, you know what? This isn't cool. This is going to get her followed by some creepers or something, so I'm going to take these down. Well, Rei Yoko Yamada doesn't realize that Papiko was watching him do this and is absolutely appreciative and loves the fact that somebody would go out of their way to do this thing for her. So she wants to show her appreciation by taking him out to dinner, right? So Ray's freaking out at this point. He just had his favorite AV actress invite him out for something to eat. That's a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? So while they're at dinner, Ray splurges and tells her all about how much he loves her films, how long he's been following her, and Papiko can't believe that she's really come across her number one fan in this circumstance, right? So as they're getting ready to go, Ray is gonna take this once in a lifetime memory with him and he's ready to walk by and never see Papiko again. But Papiko has to exchange contact information with Ray and he cannot believe his mind. <laughs> And I can't blame him, man. Who he's he's on cloud nine at this point, man. They go their separate ways. Poppy go with Ray's number in hand. Ray with Poppyco's number in hand. And as Poppy goes heading home, she sees a strange man with a helmet and a tidy whitey's on laying on the floor. Not normal, so she goes to check out, make sure the guy's okay. But as she extends her hand, the guy grabs her and puts this device on her arm. And this is where Gaga really pretty much begins, right? So. <laughs> we got the sordid potential love affair of the high school student and the adult film actress with this device on Papiko's arm that we later learn turns her gigantic. You know any of Hiroya Oku's works, he crafts some of the most unique stories present in manga right now, period. His world building the characters that he creates the dialogue between the characters is very realistic and it's not the stilted or awkward sort of interactions that we're used to seeing in manga and like anime and that kind of thing oku really takes a lot of pride and care into crafting these situations that feel like they could really be happening and then the genius of what he does is he takes these realistic scenarios and subverts them with the most outlandish crazy ass backdrops possible so you have this realistic romance happening while also having gigantic kaiju battles and literal hell spawn coming to invade earth and <laughs> It's, it's so, it's odd, but Oku is a master at doing this, right? He's a master at merging the realistic with the fantastic, and he's able to create such engrossing stories by doing this. Hey guys, quick note from the editor's bay. I just want to give you guys an idea of the plot of this thing, man, because I don't feel like I fully did it justice all the way as the review and the summary was going on. So after Papiko gets this device playing on her arm and everything, she gets into like this fight with her boyfriend. And then after that, her and Ray end up kind of connecting more and, and hooking up. And it starts to become like a sordid affair, right? We're getting our little like, uh, it's not a love triangle, because the boyfriend's really out of the picture at that point but the controversies of a 16 17 year old kid dating a 24 year old adult film actress definitely the ethics of that start to come aboard but more so than that there's the introduction of this thing called the end right the ete and it's this um internet phenomenon right it's this site that just popped up that lists all these crazy potential circumstances right where like shit rains down from Tokyo like literal like shit just poop falling on people uh famous actors will begin just walking nude in the streets it has all these just like ridiculous circumstances right that but the thing about the website is there's a poll that happens and whatever the poll wins like whatever wins uh the votes gets the most votes excuse me that thing actually happens in real life so people go on this website that are in the know and they just start voting on all this ridiculous stuff that starts to happen and eventually it gets to the point that the things that start to win are pretty destructive like 
giant kaiju attacking and taking out half the population of the earth <laughs> like that kind of thing right and what makes this so cool right is the introduction of the ete phenomena into the story starts getting into some crazy sci-fi slash philosophical elements there's this ai that's created and the story brings up the idea that what if there was an ai that strictly got all of their learning from the internet and what would that look like and <laughs> Would it be a surprise if the AI became a disgusting, perma-virgin, like, pretentious pervert if all of their <laughs> learning came from the internet? Like, they know all this stuff, they're extremely knowledgeable, but they have the heart of an incel who's a misogynist and just wants to see boobies. And, like... <laughs> Oku's ability to craft such like a nuanced take about the reality of what artificial intelligence will become if its learning came from the internet coupled with the actually extremely well done romance between Ray and Papiko and kind of showcasing what it's like to be the insecure party in a relationship and how do you behave if you really do love someone right what are you willing to sacrifice and what are you willing to give up to show love is love about possession or is it about something more you know so I just want to talk a little bit about those themes and like those aspects that come up in the manga too because I feel like they're significant and something to kind of like whet the appetite a little bit just to give you guys an idea of just how nutty this thing can get and we'll get back into the regular video I just thought I had to add that in so in doing my research for this video, I discovered that Oku's inspiration for doing Gaga was watching the DreamWorks film Monsters vs. Aliens with the lady Ginormica. <laughs> like he saw that and in his head he's like, huh, I wonder if I could do that. And this is where we got this story, right? And one thing that I've learned about Oku that I feel like really makes him special is his ability to remain pure to his vision. Oku talks about that he knows that Gaga is not going to get an anime adaptation. There's just no way the the whole setting and content of the story is built upon like statutory relationship between a high school student and adult with a gigantic nude adult film actress running around and body slamming kaiju dude like this is just not happening it's too strange it's too adult it's too graphic for it to be picked up by any sort of studio to adapt this thing and oku's editor talks about the thing that makes oku special is he is not looking for mainstream success he is not doing these stories or creating the narratives that he does in order for them to blow up and become animes or these large scale movies. He's creating them because that's his vision and that's what he wants to create. And this comes across in his work it's so powerful and it's what makes him so unique. We're in a market that's bombarded by so much sanitized, repetitive, just BS stories because people are trying to be the next big thing that blows up. You know, they're trying to be the next big Naruto, the next big My Hero. So they craft all these stories that just all look like one another and they're very cookie cutter. But Oku stands in stark contrast to this. His works are almost difficult to even talk to other people about because of how strange they are right they are there's nothing else like them on the market they have a very unique atmosphere you can tell that this came from the mind of this particular person and that there really wouldn't be anybody else out there that could create it and that to me lets you know when something is special so in oku works there's been three major themes that have been identified and oku agrees with this as well those being that of sexuality violence and the grotesque or the horrific he has a way of crafting like fear tension and those other themes and he seems to often put these into his works and the reason these themes come up so much in oku's work is because these are things that he enjoys reading <laughs> you know he talks about how if there were two okus in the world he feels like he would very much enjoy stories that he creates this is a very deliberate mark of 
his creative process and i'm glad that he's this way and it's made me respect him as one of my favorite mangaka currently gaga has also garnered controversy not just from the gigantic nude adult film actress who is the star of the show along with ray but because of ray and the adult film actress's age difference there's been a lot of people talking it up online calling it all kinds of stuff right and Oku explores how he didn't do this to stir up controversy, but because 16 and 17, the high school age protagonist, and this is what that population looks for, this is what they are really able to relate to. So he wanted to create a relatable character, but also by creating Ray as this person, it naturally led to the different scenarios and challenges within the story within the person that was going to be his love interest. So the story was very pure, you know, the conflict and the obstacles that arise weren't just artificially placed in there, but they came as a result of the characters being themselves interacting with one another and now this is the situation that they have to face and i feel like this is the best way to create a story something engrossing something that feels natural because the problems that arise are problems that are naturally happening and they're not things that the author is having to shoehorn in in order to create some something interesting that isn't really there i highly recommend gaga if you enjoy philosophy, if you enjoy romance, if you enjoy science fiction, if you enjoy reading a story that you never know what's coming next and you like adult film actresses, you got to check out Gagan. It's going to give you fetishes you never realized you had. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to put you onto an author that has so many works that are worth reading that are going to be different from anything you've ever read before. So check out Gagan and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.